This morning we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. We hand over this service into your hands. Let your sweet spirit influence us and let us be blessed by your word. This morning we give you the preeminence over this meeting and we declare that you will reign over this service. You will reign over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And let the people of God give me a thunderous amen. I say a thunderous amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Shall we be seated? Amen. Once again, I take this opportunity to thank God. And number two, to thank my father, Reverend Steve Mensah, my father and your father. Amen. Put your hands together for him. Amen. I am so grateful that he's given me the opportunity one more time to share the precious word of God with precious people. You are precious before God. Put your hands together for yourself. Amen. And of course, we want to also acknowledge the chief of staff, the deputy general, overseer, Reverend Stanley Mensa. That the wherever you are, we say God bless you for encouragement and support. Amen. Pastor Mike, God bless you so much for leading us, training us, and giving us opportunities. Amen. Hallelujah. And today being a special day, our mama. Oh, put your hands together for mama. Today is her birthday. Oh, can you rise up and give a clap offering unto the Lord? That God has added another year. Amen. So, Mama Jane, God bless you. And like I said, <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear mother. Happy birthday to you. Hip, 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 hip. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Like I said in the first service, I dedicate this preaching to her. Amen. God bless you so much. And in the first service, I gave her three scriptures. And I said, number one. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says in Genesis 24 verse 1, and Abraham was well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. May you be well stricken in age. And may God bless you with all things your heart desires. May it come to pass. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 33, 23. It says, and of Naphtali. It says, oh Naphtali, satisfied with favor, full of the blessings of God. Full of the blessings of God. Possess thou the west and the south. I pray that mama you will be satisfied with favor. And you will possess every blessing that you desire. And in the same Deuteronomy 23 verse 25 it says, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days so shall thy strength be. As thy day, so it means as you increase in age, your strength will also increase. May the Lord bless you with good health. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Mama Mata, God bless you so much for your encouragement. You are there for us and we thank God for your life. God bless you so much. Amen. And of course, my sweetheart, my wife. Sweetie, I love you wherever you are. Amen. <laughs> I also want to thank God for all pastors, colleague pastors. God bless you for your support. And of course, you who is seated there, God bless you. God bless you for accepting me to preach. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to bring us a word. I want to bring us a word. <laughs> I was saying in the first service when we entered 2018, you know, I was pondering over issues and this message dropped into my spirit. 
And the title of a message is that our responsibility towards one another as Christians. Our responsibility. And I started by saying that once upon a time, there lived two, you know, friends in a certain village. The dove and an ant. They live in a certain village. In that village, there was a pond and a tree, you know, close by each other. So one day, the dove was on the tree and saw that the ant had fallen into the pond. So the dove decided to plug a leaf and drop it in the pond. The ant climbed on it and then sailed to shore. Right. Then another time, in the same location, the ant was under the tree and realized that there was a hunter who had pointed his gun to the dove and wanted to shoot the dove down. So the ant also decided to help. Smuggle itself into the clothes of this hunter. Beat him and he dropped the gun. And then the dove flew away. One kind act deserves another. If you are here and you don't want to help anybody, don't expect any help from anybody. Amen? If you, don't, you are somebody who doesn't help anybody, don't expect help from anybody. We have come to realize that in Christianity today, we are gradually becoming more selfish, self-centered, egoistic. Hallelujah. It is like me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. And so everything we are doing is gravitating towards our benefits. Hallelujah. We are no more each other's keeper. God asked Cain in Genesis chapter 4 verse 9. He says, Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And Cain says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? This question is still relevant in our days. Because we are not each other's keeper. If God should come today and ask you, where is this your sister? You are likely to say, I don't know. I don't know. We are in church. At least once in a week we are in church. We are together. But the fact of the matter is that each one of us is alone. We come to church together, but we are alone. We come to church together, we are in church together, but our hearts are apart, far apart from each other. We come together, we are in church, but we don't care what happens to the next person. We are not concerned about what happens to the next person. We are not thinking about the next person. It is all about me. God is people and relationship oriented. And that is why he came and asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is your brother? I said, I don't know. A lot of us, when they ask us, we say we don't know. You have been friends with this person for 10 years. You don't even know where the person lives. We don't care for each other. And I said, in the morning, our team is a year of greatness. Our daddy has been teaching us a lot of things. You know, pathway to greatness. The mark of a great person. But one of the marks of a great person that I love so much is this. A great person... It's a person who is people-focused. A people-focused person is a great person. Hallelujah. A great person is the one who will make things happen for others. A great person is the one who will make life better for somebody. That is a great person. A great person is somebody who will bring hope to another person. A great person is somebody who is there. To relieve the stress of others. Hallelujah. You are always a, that is a great person. And I said, 
in the first service that lowers if you want to attain to greatness then you must begin to focus on people you must begin to focus on people in this world let me tell you it is people who will help you to climb up when you are climbing the ladder that you are climbing whether you like it or not wherever you are today it is somebody who pushed you and so if you are not a people focused person forget it god is not interested in making you great he is not interested because god is what a relationship and people focused person so this year if you want to see greatness then focus on people hallelujah god came to ask cain where is thy brother because we are supposed to be responsible for each other we are supposed to fulfill our responsibilities to each other and because he neglected it god came and asked him hallelujah and when you help people when you are focused to the needs of people you activate the golden rule the golden rule in the bible matthew chapter 7 verse 12 it says therefore whatsoever things you would that others should do unto you do even the same unto them whatsoever you want others to do for you do the same that is the golden rule for this is the law and the prophets it means that the whole book is about what doing to others what you wish so if you don't do anything for anybody automatically nothing comes to you hallelujah may you activate this golden rule and as you leave this service even if you forget all the things i'm going to say remember the golden rule if you don't have a memory verse i'll give you a memory verse matthew chapter 7 verse 12 therefore whatsoever things you would that others should do unto you do even the same unto them can you imagine the good that you do unto people if all of them are supposed to pay you back can you imagine where you'll be in life hallelujah and so god wants us to fulfill our responsibilities towards one another as christians we must start it from the church before we go out and you realize that we come to church and each one is concerned about him or herself and the rest is not my business our language now is cry your own cry but god doesn't operate that way eh? you cannot cry your own you must cry other people's cry hallelujah and so this morning i'm going to share as time allows me about 10 you know responsibilities we have towards one another as christians 10 amen number one i believe strongly that the number one responsibility we have towards one another as christians is to pray for one another to pray for one another when was the last time you prayed for somebody when was the last time you dedicated a day to pray for your general overseer? When was the last time you said, I want to pray for Reverend Mike? When was the last time you said, oh, Mama Jane, this week I want to pray for her? When was the last time you said, Mama Martha is on my heart, I want to pray for him? When was the last time you saw somebody in church? And you felt that you needed to pray for that person. And you took that person up in prayer. Gone were the days where we have prayer lists. That we pray for people. It is no more. When was the last time? The Bible says in James chapter 5 verse 16. It says confess your faults one to another. And pray for one another that ye may be healed. For the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. It means that the solutions that we want, we want for our problems is within us. If you identify 
somebody and begin to pray for that person. Whatever issue that is in that person's life, the Bible says that person will be healed. And when we talk of healing, it's not talking about only physical healing, but resolution of issues in the lives of people. Hallelujah. When was the last time? Apostle Paul, in his writings in Romans chapter 1 verse 9, and then Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 2, all of them talk about the same thing. He says, I always... You know, give thanks concerning you and making mention of you in my prayers. Making mention of you in my prayer. Who have you made mention of in your prayers? In recent times, be truthful to yourself. Who have you made mention of in prayer? It is food for thoughts. Hallelujah. Who? If we will begin to pray for one another, a lot of the issues will be what? Resolved. And I said, look, we are spiritual beings. If you identify Mama Jane and start praying for Mama Jane, there will be that spiritual synchronization. She may not know, but there will be some attraction. She may feel to do something for you you don't understand. Yes, you don't know why she's doing we are spiritual beings. Hallelujah. And so this morning I came to tell you that you have a responsibility to pray for the next person. Hallelujah. Amen. You have a responsibility. Tell the next person I have a responsibility to pray for you. And I'll pray for you. I am not saying it, but I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. When you pray for others, others will pray for you. When you pray for others, intercessors will pick your name in the realms of the spirit and begin to intercede for you. Hallelujah. So, the number one responsibility this year, make it a point that you make mention of somebody in your prayers. It is not you and your family and your business alone. It is not you. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two. Responsibility towards one another is to love one another. Love one another. The whole thing about Christianity is love. God is love. Hallelujah. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. And anyone who does not love is not born again. Forget it, you are not born again. Because the Bible said, he that is born of God loves. Amen. The whole law, the whole, all the laws are hanging on one thing, love. So Jesus says in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, it says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, so love each other. By this all men will know that you are truly my disciple if you love each other, if you love one another. By this all men may know. It means that if we express our love, you know, tangibly, practically, people will know that indeed we are Christians. In the first service, I was saying that, have you ever gone to the hospital where a Muslim person is admitted or is giving birth? You will see, they, they, they will take over the whole world. They are just tripping in. They are just tripping in. When somebody is going to marry, what they do is that all the women, they will gather and buy everything and go and set up a kitchen for the woman. So by the time you are marrying, your kitchen is full of food, everything. They will be there just to express their love. To express their love. Hallelujah. The Bible says, 
For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take it, you do not consume each other. Galatians chapter 4 verse 14 to 15. The whole law is in one word. It means that all that we are supposed to obey is summarized in one word. Love thy neighbor as thyself. But in Christianity today, we bite ourselves, we devour ourselves. Hallelujah. The whole law. Amen. Pull each other down. It must be you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Oh, no man anything but love one another. For he that loveth another fulfills what? Has fulfilled the law. Oh, no man anything except what? Love. Tell somebody that I owe you love. And I'll pay you. Don't owe man anything except what? Love. Because he that love and loves another has fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, then you have done well. James chapter 2 verse 8. If you want fulfill the royal law, the royal law is what? Love. The royal law is love. When I'm talking about love, I'm not talking about using your mouth to say I love you and that is it. It must be what? Practicalized. It must be something you practice. You sacrifice to do something for somebody without expecting anything. God gave us Jesus Christ without expecting. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't say you should pay for it. It's free. So if you love somebody, whatever you are doing for that person is not because that person can pay you back. It's not because. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. The Bible says in the book of John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, if you have this world's goods and you see a brother in need and you shut your bowels of mercy towards that person, how dwelleth there in the love of God? If you have the world, God has blessed you, but you see your brother in need and say, oh, go, it shall be well with you. How dwelleth they in the love of God? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12, let your love increase and abound towards all men. All men. Your love increase and abound. Amen. People of God, what will make us distinct from other religions is the love. Because God is love. He set an example for us. And that example is unbeatable. That he should release his son. Without expecting us to pay anything. To benefit from salvation. This morning I came to challenge you. Love somebody. Love somebody practically. The person cannot pay you back. But that is your responsibility. That is your responsibility. Love one another. Amen. Let me move on. Number three. Our responsibility towards one another is to admonish one another. To admonish one another. To advise one another in a good way. Because there are people who can give you a bad advice and that will send you to your grave. That will send you collapsing, crumbling. But if you are a child of God, every admonishment or advice you give must be sound and based on the word of God. Must bring somebody life, must bring somebody up. 
And so the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse, verse 16. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in what? Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Singing with what? Grace out of your heart. Amen. It means that if you can give sound counsel and admonishment, the word of God must dwell in you. He said it must dwell in you in all wisdom. Every wisdom for life is in the word of God. But some of us, we have been in church five years, ten years, we cannot give any sound counsel. Anybody who comes to you and says, oh, let me, let me call Mama Jane so that you're going to... There are certain levels you have to call Mama Jane. But there are certain, you know, levels you should be able to handle it. According to the word of God, this is how it should be. We must let the word of God dwell richly in us so that we can admonish one another. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 53, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts what? Good manners. But if you are in the company of believers, you must what? Have the advantage of receiving good counsel. Amen? Oh, are you learning something? How for the receiving there, you will receive it, you have received it, uh, it will manifest. But these are principles. Principles that will help you become great. Because God doesn't bless us, you know, just for our sake. Any blessing that God brings into your life, it is because he has other people in mind. And that is why he blesses you. So I've always said that if you are blessed and you have millions of money in your account and it doesn't flow to any other person, you are not blessed. I don't consider you as a blessed person. You can have all the monies in the world. But if it doesn't benefit another person, you are not a blessed person. You are never a blessed person. Amen? Amen. May God give you the spirit of wisdom by the word of God. That anybody who comes to you for counsel, may you have the grace to counsel them. May you have the grace. We have a lot of issues. A lot of issues in life. But when people come to you, let them go back better than they came to you. Let them go back knowing that indeed, I have received a word that has refreshed my spirit. Fulfilled. Hallelujah. So we need to what? Admonish one another. Don't give anybody any bad counsel. From today, you are prohibited. From today, I say you are prohibited. Every word out of your mouth will bring life to somebody. Will bring encouragement to somebody. Will lift up somebody's spirit. Say, I believe it. And I receive it. Hallelujah. Number four, we need to bear one another's burden. A burden is a weight. A weight that somebody is not able to, you know, you know stand. It's like that thing is pressing the person down. Have you identified anybody who is going through serious troubles that is weighing that person down? What is your contribution to the, to the life of that person? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, it says, bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is that bear each other's burden. If your sister is going through something that has the potential of what? Pushing that person down. You must be a support. You must be a support. You must raise prayers. You must tell other friends, this sister is going through this and I want us to stand in the gap and support that person. If it needs reaching out to that person in material terms, you must do it. Bear one another's burden. Do you know that you all, we all come to church beautifully dressed, but mommy, you know what? People are crumbling. People are going down. 
They are going down. Amen. If we care enough, we will know. People come to church, sit by each other for years, but they don't even know each other. You are in CEM. You meet a CEM member outside there and you don't even know the person. You pass by. Even if you know the person, you pretend as if you, have, you haven't seen the person. It happens a lot. A lot. Oh, this person is in CEM. Isn't it a joy to meet each other and say, Oh, brother, how are you? They say, you see, I, they will just yes, pass. We are not concerned about each other. Bear each other's what? Bear them. Hallelujah. Number five. That is another responsibility we have towards each other is to what? Be kind towards one another. Kindness. Somebody say kindness. Will you be kind to me? Ask somebody, will you be kind to me? It is Bible. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. It says, be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Yes, as Christ. For uh, God, for Christ's sake, has what? Forgiven you. The whole thing about Christianity is forgiveness. We did so many things. If we were to play each one of us our video, the video of our lives here. If we say it is your turn, they slot your video and they play it. The things you have done, God. <laughs> but in all these things, God had mercy. And he has shown you what? Kindness. People of God, I came to submit to you that be the reason why somebody will cry the tears of joy. Show some kindness unto somebody that the person will go and say, I don't know, I don't know what I have done. For this person to show me this kind of kindness. Be the reason why somebody will laugh. In church, who have you ever shown kindness? Who have you ever done something without expecting, you know, any pain? We are supposed to be kind towards one another. Kindness. Amen? Kindness. I was saying that, you know, every time we come to church, we are believing God that somebody will bless us. What about you? What about you? You are believing that by the time you are going, somebody will come and say, oh, sister, take 1,000 Ghana. Hey, my miracle has come. But what about you? Have you decided to show kindness to somebody who least expected it? Kindness. When you do kind things to people, eh, in fact, it lifts their spirit. Kindness. I remember the, the, this woman, you know, who, you know, most of the times when we come early in the morning and we see the pouches, we don't know who does it. There's this woman who comes every day. By the time we get here, she's here. At times she will do the work before she will go and change herself. She will put the pouches on every seat. And it's like nobody is seeing one day, Mother's Day, and the administration decided to pick her name and call her. You asked Pastor John how the woman felt. She felt so... She, 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 she didn't believe it that somebody has thought of her. And because of that kind act, this woman would never leave the church. Surprise people. Show kindness to somebody who least expect it. That is our responsibility. Hallelujah. Oh, do it better for Jesus. <laughs> kindness. Be the reason why somebody will rejoice. Be the reason why somebody will have food on the table. Be the reason why somebody will not be denied his admission to a university because of money. Be the reason why something good will happen to somebody. May you become a reference point for somebody. 
that that person will say, if it had not been this woman, I don't think I would have finished university. Be a reference point. Hallelujah. Amen. Kindness. Amen. Number what? Six. Number six is about what? Forgiveness. It is our responsibility to forgive one another. Because God has forgiven us. Matthew 6, 14 to 15 talks about the fact that if you forgive others their sins, God will forgive yours. If you don't forgive, God too will not forgive you. It's a principle. And one of the things that can, you know, disqualify us from entering to heaven is unforgiveness. Hallelujah. Unforgiveness. The whole issue about Christianity is what? Forgiveness. Now, as human as we are, people will do things unto us that are beyond <laughs> forgiveness. But when the divine comes in, there is no issue that is beyond forgiveness. And that is why you need the influence of the Holy Spirit to be able to forgive. Hallelujah. Imagine... Somebody you have trained, maybe you have a shop, you have trained a person and brought the person up and one day the person just, you know, leaves you and then takes all your customers away. How will you feel towards that person? Or as your only sister, that somebody impregnates, they go to do abortion and your sister dies. When you see that guy, how will you feel? Can you forgive <laughs> but it is possible it is possible with the Holy Spirit I was I just giving those examples because there are certain issues it's difficult but when the Holy Spirit takes over it becomes easy I pray for you that any person you are holding in heart that you cannot let go by the power of the Holy Spirit may you forgive in the name of Jesus when you forgive, it's like you have released a prisoner. But later on, you find out that you were the prisoner. Do you, do you understand? When you forgive somebody, it's like you have released a prisoner. But in later times, you realize that you are actually the prisoner. You were the one. Because if you had not released that person, you continue to be in prison yourself. Forgiveness. Have the spirit to forgive. May the Holy Spirit help you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The next one is that we must restore each other. It is our responsibility to restore each other. When you hear that a sister or a brother has fallen, it is not time for you to rejoice. It is not time for you to do concern about that person, to gossip about that person. It is not that time to pick up phone and say, have you heard what this sister has done? The Bible says, you who are spiritual must restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. If any man is taken in fault, you who are spiritual, it is for us to restore each other back to our position in Christ. Because with God, when you fall, that doesn't mean that is your end. He says, a righteous man will fall seven times, seven times he will arise. God is always ready to give us chances to be restored. But we, the human beings, we want to just finish your case. May it not be so with you. When a sister or a brother is taken in any trouble, you must do your best to help. What can I do to help? Amen. The next one is, the next responsibility towards one another is respect. Respect. We have to respect each other irrespective of our status. Irrespective of our status in life. We have to, as long as we are children of God, we must respect each other. I said, anytime you disrespect 
another brother or sister, you have disrespected God. For we were all created in the image of God. Amen. Respect. There's a tendency for we human beings to, you know, to show partiality. Because of what? Our levels in life. And so in James chapter 2, verse 2, 3, and 4, it talks about the fact that like this assembly, when a man walks into the assembly with gold ring, with nice apparel, all right, and a poor man also enters here with poor clothing, and you say to the nice man, come here and sit here. But the poor man said, oh, you stay there. Or come and sit under my foot. The Bible says, have you not become partial? And you have become a judge of evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. It does not matter the status of a person. We must respect each other. Hallelujah. We must, we must hold each other in what? Respect, reputation, high honor and respect. Because in the eyes of that person, that person is valuable unto God. Every soul is precious unto God. Hallelujah. For some of us, certain people will come to our home. Certain people will not come because of status. It's true. It shouldn't be so. When you do your party, fine. We must, you know, because maybe you may not be able to cater for everyone, you may decide to. But when you are inviting people, who and who come to your party? And people can pay you back. Correct for three points. <laughs> Let us be fair to one another. Though in life we are not equal, God has what lifted us into various, but for us believers, we must look at people as what being created in the image of God, and we must not despise them. It says, Receive him in the Lord and hold such a one in what reputation. Philippians chapter 2, verse 29. Epaphroditus. Apostle Paul was writing, you know, he was somebody, he took, you know, information to Paul in Rome. And when he got there, he became sick to the point of death because of Paul. And so he was coming back to the, the, the church in Philippi. And Paul was sending him and said, Ho, receive him in the Lord. It does not matter how he has become. Receive him in the Lord and hold such a one in high reputation. Everyone is important. In this house, every single soul is important. Hallelujah. And that is why I like Reverend Steve and, you know, his brother. You know, you go to certain churches. To see the bishop is Wahala. But you can imagine our daddy will finish and say, Okay, those of us who have seen me for a long time, when we close, I'm standing here. Come and shake me. And nobody will go past him and then he will ignore. Everybody is important. Hallelujah. They treat everybody's case with importance. Respect. Amen. The next one is do good unto somebody. Do good unto somebody. They are related. But the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. It says, therefore... As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially those of them that are of the household of faith. Household of faith. In this church, who have you ever done good to? Ask yourself. Who have you ever done good to? Do good to somebody, especially the brethren. The next one is that let us be helpers of one another. Amen. 
Our responsibility is to be what? Helpers. In this, I'm not saying you can identify somebody and become a helper to that person. Romans chapter 16 verse 3 says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila for me, my helpers in Christ. May you be a helper to somebody in Christ. That that person, you have taken that person and say, Look, I am going to be your helper. You help the person until the point. If Apostle Paul had a helper in Christ, each one of us need helpers. Say, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ. May you be a helper to somebody in Christ, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That is 10, eh? Last one. I have up to 15, but I'll stop. The last one is, let us be there for one another. Your responsibility is to be there for another person. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 2, reading verse 1 and 2, it says, and there was, on the third day, there was what? A marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was what? There. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited. Did Jesus and his disciples respond to the invitation? Did they respond? Jesus was busier than anybody, but he was at the wedding. Hallelujah. One thing that makes people feel a sense of belonging and fulfillment is when you are there for them. When we come to church and the person comes and says, you know, oh, I am going to dedicate my baby. You know, Pastor Mike, can you be there? The moment Pastor Mike honors it and goes there, they feel so important, a sense of belonging. Everything is not supposed to be spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. We are social beings and we have social needs. Today's believer doesn't have time for anybody. But when it comes to yours, you want people to be there. When it comes to you, you want people to be there. But when it is somebody, I have something doing. You must be there to help fix problems, situations. The mother of Jesus was there. There was a situation and she was the one that they approached. They said, we have shortage of wine. What can we do? She offered advice and there was a solution. Jesus himself was there. Let us be there for one another. Let us be there for one another. Because if you are not there for one another, when it gets to your turn, nobody will be there. And so I come back to the golden rule. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Therefore, <laughs> whatsoever things you would that others should do unto you, do even the same to them. And when you do that, automatically you attract the blessings. Can we have prayer lists to pray for each other? When you pray for others, the Bible says because you are a righteous person, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. Why did he start and say, let's preach for one another that we may be healed. Then it continues. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. It means that when we pray for each other, whatever be the issues in our lives, they can be resolved. And remember, Proverbs 11.25, the liberal soul shall be what? Made fat. And he that waters shall be what? Watered. He that watered, the water will splash back onto him. Proverbs 11.25. Amen. So God bless you. And I pray that we'll become one another's keeper. When God asks you, where is thy brother? Where is thy sister? You will be able to say, Lord, I know something about he or she. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Our responsibility is towards one another. This afternoon, in the next one minute, I want you to pray. And the prayer topic is simple. 
Lord, bless me so that I'll be a blessing. That blessing can be financial, spiritual, whatever. Lord, bless me so that I'll be a blessing. Because he told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, he says, I'll make your name great. I'll bless you so that you will be a blessing. Out of you shall all the family of the earth be blessed. So lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this afternoon, I pray that you will bless me to be a blessing. This afternoon, bless the work of my hands. Bless my plans. Bless my business. Bless whatever I'm doing so that I can be a blessing unto others. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, bless me in the name of Jesus. As you are praying, take your offering and come to the altar and say, Lord, I'm entering into a covenant with you that you will bless me to be a blesser. Zakata Yoloba, Abraskin de Yoloba, Atayoloba, Zanda Yoloba, Yeniba, Atayoloba, Zanda Yoloba. Take your offering and come to the altar in the name of Jesus. Come and lay it before the altar. Apayoloba, and the Yoloba, Zakata Yoloba, Tayoloba, Badiba, and the Yoloba. Lord bless me that I'll be a blesser. Bless me that I'll be a blesser. That is my vision, my goal, that you will bless me that I'll be a blesser. I am waiting for you. You are coming to the altar with your seal, and you are saying that as I drop this offering, Lord, make me a blessing. Under your lover, Zakata Yoloba, Abraskin Yoloba, Payolaba Padiba, Under your lover, Zakata Yoloba, Payolaba, 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 Under your lover. My desire is that I'll be a blessing. My goal is that I'll be a blessing. Bless me, O God, that I shall be a blessing. Payolaba, Under your lover, Padiba, Payolaba Padiba, Payolaba Padiba, Payolaba Padiba, Payolaba. Father of God, by reason of this offering, Lord, I pray that you will bless me, that I shall be a blessing unto many of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. As we sing this song, if there's anybody here who wants to give your life, number one, to Christ, you may be one person, but that is the day the Lord has made for you. Please come here and we'll pray with you because all these things will not make sense if you are not born again. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if you are not born again, you cannot operate in the spirit, things of the spirit. So anyone who wants to be born again, please come forward. And number two, those of us, if you want to be born again, just stand here. Those of us who just because of this message, you want God to touch your life, that you live according to the word. You want to rededicate your relationship with others unto God. Please rise and come before the altar in the name of Jesus as we just pray for you. My Lord is good. My Lord is good. My Lord is good. My Lord is good. 
be the same mark it in your life you will become what God wants you to be in the name of Jesus the Lord bless you in Jesus name amen, amen. right just follow our, our counselor we will take hallelujah amen God bless you so much for receiving me and I pray that this message will help you to attain unto greatness. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we welcome Reverend Mike? Oh, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. Have you been blessed this afternoon? What do we say to Pastor Charles? I say, what do we say to Pastor Charles? Pastor Charles, God richly bless you for such a powerful, wonderful, convicting message. Amen. How many of you have been convicted this afternoon? All of us, all of us, all of us. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe that by this message, I see you praying for somebody. As I see you praying for somebody. I declare that from today you will not wake up in the morning or during your prayer time you are praying for yourself Lord give me this Lord I need this Lord is that but you are interceding for somebody and as you do that may the Lord also meet you at the point of your need I see you admonishing somebody you are bringing somebody good counsel hallelujah word of encouragement and I see you also being there for somebody. May you be there for somebody. I say, may you be there for somebody. May you show love to somebody this week and every day of your life. And I see you forgiving somebody. I don't know what that person has done to you, but I see you forgiving somebody. May you receive the spirit of forgiveness and love. Say, I receive it. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together one more time unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we want you to know that this week, beginning from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the morning, Saturday in the evening, and Sunday, we are having our Easter convention. The Easter convention is starting from Wednesday in the evening, Thursday in the evening, 
Friday morning, 8 o'clock, we are here for the Good Friday service. And then Saturday in the evening, 5 p.m., we have the waiting in worship. And then Sunday we, is, the, is, the, is Easter Sunday and also our communion service. So all of us, we are coming here from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday for the Easter service. Hallelujah. Let me see by hands those who will not come for the convention. If you will not come for the convention. Because Reverend Steve is watching to see how many are coming, how many are not coming. Let me see by hands those who will be coming, those who will come. If you know you will come, all right. Hallelujah. So it means that from Wednesday in the evening, 6 p.m., we are here. Thursday in the evening, 6 p.m., we are here. Friday morning, we are here for the Good Friday service. Saturday, 5 p.m. in the evening, waiting in worship. And then Sunday, first and second service. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And next Sunday too is our communion service. Our communion service. So all of us, let's prepare our tithes, our offerings, and all commitment that we have unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Talk to Israel. Talk to Israel. All participants, all participants must complete their payments by the close of March. If you are here, you have shown interest to go for the, uh, to be part of the tour to Israel. By the end of this month, we, you have to finish up your payment. And also all participants, you must pick up your visa processing forms. The visa processing forms are ready. So go out to the registration desk and pick up your registration forms. And those of you who also want to be part of the mass wedding, the mass wedding, which is coming off on the, uh, the 30th of June, please uh, see either me or Pastor Francis for the forms, for the forms. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Have you been blessed this afternoon? Have you been blessed this afternoon? Well, today is the birthday of our mother, the first lady of the church. Oh, are you happy for her? All right. Well, in the first service, in the first service, we know we made some presentation, some powerful presentation. Powerful presentation. Uh, is it here so that uh, we, can, we can show it? Do you have the, yeah, bring it. And then uh, we made her to cut a cake in the first service. And then it was shared for uh, church members. Second service, she's going to cut another cake. Uh, for, for church members, hallelujah, amen. So we want to invite our mother, first lady, Reverend Mrs. Jim Mensa, the wife of our general overseer. Put your hands together for her. Ma, will you sing some happy birthday song for her? Come on, let's sing it. We want to invite Reverend Mata Mensa and Mrs. Aveva to help her to cut the cake. Happy birthday. 
Congratulations. We love you so much. God bless you. Amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. yes. The church also has a check for you. Hey. Congratulations. God bless you. Oh, Happy yeah. birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, sing. So they will cut the cake in pe into pieces and when we close, just go out and pick a little and let's enjoy it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So protocol ladies, please, let's go out and organize the cake. Just cut them into pieces so that when we close, everybody will have uh, something to enjoy. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Well, we want to close now. Don't forget, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we are here for the Easter convention. Don't miss it uh, with our, our daddy, Reverend Steve Mensah, and Bishop Bernard all the way from Holland. Hallelujah. All right. Shall we be on our feet as we close? We still want to encourage those of you who made pledges during the anniversary convention. If you still haven't redeemed your pledge, Make sure that uh, you redeem that pledge and God will richly bless your life. Your hands are lifted unto the Lord. From victory on to victory is And Christ is Lord in me. Hallelujah. The convention, the Easter convention is starting from this Wednesday. So please don't miss the convention. Hallelujah. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And the Lord forever give you peace. As you go from this place, May the hand of God's favor and blessings rest upon your life. We declare that this week shall be the week that God has purpose to bless you, to meet you at the point of your need, and also to favor you. Till we see you on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and next Sunday. May the Lord keep you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.